In this video, I am going to show you how to perform Bruce Pagan test in R. Bruce Pagan test is used uh, to check presence of heteroscedasticity in a linear regression model. As you may know, the assumption in a linear regression is that the errors should be homoscedastic, which means that the distribution of the error should be even. The error term should not depend on the changes in the independent variable and it should be evenly distributed. If this assumption is violated, the, uh, the standard deviation or the standard error of the estimate will be biased or will not be trustworthy. So the point estimates will still be fine, but the interval estimates will be a problem. So you need to then handle, first of all, uh, if, uh, first of all, uh, check whether it is present in your regression model. And secondly, if it is present, then you need to deal with it. You need to uh, correct it before uh, performing a linear regression model and interpreting the results. So we'll take an example. This will be more of an application. If you want to learn a bit more about theory, you can read up on the internet. Wikipedia is a very good source if you want to just understand the basics of it. But there are also other good videos on YouTube as well as uh, there are many blogs uh, on which you can read up more about it. All right, so this is a typical example of heteroscedasticity. You see the distribution of the error and you see that it's not even. Um, the, the variance is actually increasing over time, right? It's increasing uh, with respect to some other, you know, changes in some other variable. And that is a typical example of heteroscedasticity and that is, is an issue. How do we check it? Well, we can check it uh, using a statistical test called bruce pagan test. I'm not going to uh, get into the theory of bruce pagan test, but um, we'll just see how you can perform this in R. We'll take an example. So I've taken this uh, data set uh, called MTCAS. It's a built-in data set. You can find it also on your R session. So we first uh, load this data and let's first see how the data looks like okay i've taken this data set in other uh, part of my video so i'm sure you must be familiar with a uh, regular on my channel okay so it's basically about um data about uh, cars so you have mileage you have number of cylinders uh, you have all kinds of other variables right so mileage is the uh, the dependent variable here the response variable the other variables can be taken as uh, the independent variable so using this data you can perform a linear regression model to see um, uh, how mileage is dependent on all other aspects of the car which which could be uh, number of gears number of cylinders etc weight of the car length of the car and etc right um, so We'll take a very simple example. So we'll build a linear regression model using um, the LM function, right, linear model. And mileage, MPG, is the response variable or the dependent variable in this case, okay? And we'll use two independent variables, okay? But you can use many more, okay? But just for the sake of simplicity, we'll take only two independent variables and the data that we use is empty card. So it's a very simple syntax. If you're familiar with the linear regression model in R, it, it's so simple, right? Just use a function, uh, mention the dependent variable and the tilde sign, and then just provide the independent variables. It's as simple as that. All right, so let us run this. Now we have run our linear regression model and the results are now stored in the variable model. So how do we see that? Use the summary function and summary and then in bracket just give the variable in which we have the results stored uh, all right so here you see results and let me show you um, okay let me show you the results so here you see the results okay so you see that um, both are um, significant variables because the p-value is less than 0.05 uh, you have good r square also 74 percent adjusted r square is 73 percent um, so it seems to be a good model because both independent variables are significant 
very good r square but we do not just uh, worry about uh, r square but we also worry about whether we can properly interpret the estimates or not and here the estimates are uh, the estimates uh, here right you see the estimates um, the coefficients the so intercept and the coefficients of variables right um, now in the presence of Hotter's complexity, the point estimate is not unbiased. It uh, is not is not biased basically, but the standard error could be uh, problematic, and that's where we need to check whether um, there is a presence of heterosclerosity or not. And it's a standard check that you should do every time you build a linear regression model. So the it's a statistical test we'll perform. Um, it's a hypothesis testing basically. So we have null hypothesis as heteroscedacity is not present and the alternative being heteroscedacity is present. Okay. And if our p value is, um, its p value is basically uh, greater than 0 0.05, then we will go with the null hypothesis. Okay. Otherwise, we will go with the alternate hypothesis. In order to perform the Bruce Pagan test, we'll have to um, install a package called LM test. Um, I've already installed, but you can use the installed packages to install the package and then call the library LM test. Um, let's do that. And then use the function BP test. BP test uh, stands for Bruce Pagan test. Okay. So let us run this and what we get here is that you see the the test statistic is 4.08 which corresponds to a p value of 0 0.12 that means the p value is greater than 0 0.05 at 95% confidence level the p value is greater than 0 0.12 sorry greater than 0 0.5 right uh, let me correct greater than 0.05 not 5 okay let it write it down just to avoid any confusion um, okay so p value here is how much 0.1296 right which is greater than 0 0.05 hence what we do here is that we do not reject the null hypothesis okay in other words we basically accept the null hypothesis, which is that heteroscedacity is not present in the model. So we should not be worrying about presence of heteroscedacity. That's now proven. Now, what if there is heteroscedacity in your model? Uh, what does that mean? How should you then go about um, removing it or dealing with it? Well, if there is presence of heteroscedacity, in which case you will get a p-value less than 0.05, then the there are two solutions for this. One, you transfer the response variable. So you have the target, heter the dependent variable, right? Instead of uh, taking mileage, just transform it uh, using logarithmic transformation. So just take log of uh, MPG, uh, log of mileage, log of the dependent variable. So if you take logarithm of that, then chances are that the heteroscedacity will go away. Um, there is another way of dealing with it, which is that instead of ordinary least square, use the weighted least square. So what weighted least square does is that if it gives different weights to different uh, observations, hence uh, the variance, the change, changing variance is taken care of, um, right? So it doesn't give equal variance to each observation, so equal weight to each observation, rather different weight to different observations based on uh, whether they are very far from the mean or close to the mean so that takes care of the problem so these are two solutions that you can try out you can take an example actually to see in a case where heteroscedacity does is present and then you deal with that in this unfortunately in this example it doesn't fail so we are limited with making the two uh, you know this transformation and then using wls maybe in another tutorial i'll show an example where you know it is failing the test is failing and then you um, try to deal with the situation either using transformation or using WLS vertical least square regression all right so that's about it if you have questions let me know in the comment section
थैंक यू